Welcome to Social Work Updates. In this video, we are going to talk about the definition, characteristics, elements, principles and process of social casework. Let's begin in defining. What is casework? A primary method of social work is social casework. It is focused with the adjustment and growth of persons in various contexts in order to achieve more rewarding relationships. It takes a methodical approach to researching and diagnosing the client's issue. Different social scientists have characterized social casework in different ways as an example. According to Warner Boehm, social casework is a type of social work that takes action in the psychosocial components of a person's life, because it concern about to improve, to restore, to maintain and to enhance his social functioning by improving his role performance. According to Safrad, a social worker's method is called social casework because it assists individuals. It discover a solution to social adjustment problem, which they can resolve satisfactorily through their own efforts. Mary Richmond says that the art of doing various things with different people while working with them to attain some of their own and society's betterment is how social casework is defined. Nature of social casework. A connection in social casework has components of acceptance, expectation, support, and stimulation. Where both the client and the caseworker are self-contained in. A casework partnership can serve a variety of therapeutic purposes like it give us betterment of the situation. It is a stage in the formation of one's personality and. It is a capacity building exercise. There is a greater need for social adjustment and relationships require outside assistance in social casework. Elements of social casework. According to Helen Harris Perlman she defined casework as, a person with a problem comes to a place where a professional representative supports him through a given process. And it is known as the five P's theory. According to this definition, there are five elements of social casework. These are, person, problem, place, professional representative and, process. Let's start with what is person. In social casework, any individual is not a person. A person is defined as a man, woman, kid, or anyone with social, psychological, or economic problems who seeks or needs support in social situations. This individual is referred to as a client. When a person fails or is unable to manage with his or her difficulties on his or her own and seeks the assistance of a social worker, he or she is referred to as a client. Next element is the problem. A issue is a condition that emerges as a result of an obstacle in man's environment that has challenged the adequacy of his attempts to operate effectively. According to Hussain and Aladdin, a problem in social casework is a stressful scenario that has jeopardized or disrupted the client's normal functioning. Two types of problems which includes the following. First is the intrapersonal problem. The intrapersonal problem is a scenario that only affects one guy, and the influence of the condition is only felt by that one man. And second is the interpersonal problem. Is a condition that impacts two or more persons or a group is referred to as an interpersonal problem. The individual's issue could be social, psychological, physical, or financial in nature. The following are some of the sources of the client's problems. Number 1. Disturbance in the economy. Number 2. Disintegration of society. Number 3. Male adjustment in terms of finances. Number 4. Adjustment of social males. Number 5. Conflict between individuals. Number 6. Conflict inside the family and. Number 7. Disturbance of personality. Next is the place. The agency through which the professional caseworker assists the client's social functioning is referred to as the place. A social caseworker agency, according to Hussain and Aladdin, is an organized entity that offers services materials or non-materials for the solution of client difficulties. There are two types of agency, the following are. First is the public agency. The term, public agency, refers to government-run organizations. And last is the private agency. The term, private agency, refers to organizations that are funded by voluntary contributions and government assistance. According to Perlman, the categorization of the agency is determined by three key variables. These are the following. Number one. There is a source of support for them. 
Number 2. There is a professional authority source and. Number 3. There is a specific purpose and area of concern for them. Next is the professional representative. A social caseworker is a professional representative. A caseworker must be skilled at building relationships with clients and determining their problems and solutions. By social caseworker, Hussain and Aladdin define it as, a professional individual engaged by a social agency who possesses knowledge, abilities, and procedures of social casework. The social caseworker has a responsibility to, first, his line of work, second, his organization, third, his client and, fourth, he is himself. The designation of a caseworker varies depending on the workplace, such as medical caseworkers, mental caseworkers, and so on. The last elements is the process. A series of actions is referred to as a process. However, in the context of social casework, process refers to a set of acts made to assist clients and solve difficulties. However, this does not imply that the caseworker can address all of the client's difficulties. By watching the client's motion, emotions, desires, and abilities, a caseworker chooses the problem-solving procedure. If he is unable to determine or choose a problem-solving process for the client, he can recommend him to others. In problem-solving process, there are five phases. First is the psychosocial study. Second is the diagnosis. Third is the treatment plan, followed by the evaluation end. Last is the follow-up. Principles of social casework. Every organization has its own set of rules and regulations. The social casework principles are the essential standards that guide the caseworker's actions. These principles are classified into two categories. First is the differential principles. The differential principle refers to the ideas that aid caseworkers in diagnosing situations under various circumstances and next is the generic principles. The term generic principle refers to a set of guidelines that can be applied to any casework situation. Let's begin with the principle of acceptance. Acceptance is the act of agreeing to receive something. A caseworker must recognize an individual as a person of worth and dignity, rather than treating them as a problem, and must constantly accept both positive and negative feelings. When the client first meets with the caseworker, he is nervous and fearful of the new person. As a result, the caseworker should accept the client-friendly option so that he may communicate all of his worries with him. The term, rapport, refers to this reciprocal acceptance. Like worker applies principles of acceptance to the client. Next is the principle of communication. The exchange of information is referred to as communication. However, in social casework practice, it is the client's and social worker's exchange of perspectives, ideas, feelings, and thoughts about the difficulties. A caseworker can realize and explain the client's current situation through communication. There are two types of communication. The verbal and nonverbal. Verbal communication might through a word-for-word -word discussion of the issue and nonverbal expressed feelings and emotions. These are two ways to express yourself. In casework practice, the idea of communication necessitates the explanation and reclarification of the conditions under which two persons engage in a professional relationship. Next is the principle of participation. To take part in anything is to participate. In social casework, the caseworker and client establish a rapport in order to solve the client's problem. However, the client's active participation is required for this relationship to flourish. A caseworker can benefit from the client's active participation. These are follows. First, it identify the most effective solution to the issue. Second, it identify the client's advantages and disadvantages and. Third, it boosts the client's self-assurance. The fundamental goal of the problem-solving process can also be achieved with the client's active participation. It improves the client's ability to self-determine and make decisions about the various aspects of the stressful circumstance. Principle of self-determination. The principle of self-determination guarantees the client's right to choose and make decisions in the problem-solving process with the assistance of a caseworker. This right, however, is not unrestricted. It is constrained by the client's. First, the decision-making ability. 
second, based in the law, third, governed by a moral rule of behavior and fourth is, by the agency. According to this principle, a caseworker is a person who helps people with their problems like first, assist the client in clearly seeing the situation and second, assist the client in reactivating dormant resources. Create a welcoming setting in which the customer can feel at ease. Not directly manipulate any choice and without attempting to persuade the client to accept his decision. Principle of confidentiality. The term, confidentiality, refers to the rule of preserving secrets. Confidentiality is essential in social casework because it gives protection to the client's confidential information. It is the client's fundamental right. It's the client's ethical responsibility and it requires for good casework practice. A caseworker follows this approach by attempting to gather information about the client in order to fully comprehend the problem. However, because the customer is a direct source of information, he wants to be kept safe in general, so that no one else is aware of his personal information. A caseworker should do this by reserving and preserving the client's information. Next is the principle of individualization. Individualization entails examining a person from multiple perspectives rather than just one. Walter Friedlander claims that individualization is the recognition and understanding of each client's unique qualities, as well as the differential application of principles and methods in assisting each to a better adjustment. According to this principle, a caseworker is a person who helps people with their problems. Social worker must attribute the following. First, he or she must be unbiased and prejudice free. Second, maintains understanding of human behavior. Third, maintain the ability to listen and notice. Fourth, maintain the capacity to move at the pace of the client and. Fifth, keep the capacity to enter the client's feelings. The following are the essentials of individualization. First, preparation for the interview. Second, confidentiality of the interview. Third, boosting the client's morale and last is the language and adaptability. The last principle is the principle of self-awareness. Self-awareness is a notion that requires the caseworker to be conscious of his own self, strengths, and weaknesses. A social worker must be the following. First, social worker must be critical. Second, must be aware of oneself. Third, must determine one's strengths and shortcomings and fourth, must be able to empathize with others' feelings. Self-awareness is required of a caseworker. He may easily skew his view of the client's personality if he is unaware of his own preconceptions, pet hates, and biases. If the caseworker is impacted by emotions, prejudices, bias, or sensitivity, this ability is harmed. And that's it, thanks for watching. For more social work updates, please watch and like the video, hit the bell and subscribe to my YouTube channel.